For all the talk of Australia's ageing population, it's worth remembering that around one third of our people are under 25 years of age. What we do today matters for their tomorrow, not only in terms of what we leave behind for them, but also what we do to help their growth as people. As our society changes economically, technologically and demographically, we need to be sure that the plans we put in place today don't allow those just starting down the road of life to fall between the cracks. I am particularly concerned about the impact of social exclusion on our young. Social exclusion occurs when someone experiences multiple overlapping problems, such as unemployment, poor mental health or inadequate education, which together make it impossible to participate fully in society. The Brotherhood of St Lawrence has developed a social exclusion monitor based on the annual housing, income and labour dynamics in Australia survey. It's found that just under one in five people under 25 experience some form of social exclusion. 3.5% experience deep social exclusion, meaning they experience at least four different types of measured disadvantage. That's over a staggering 250,000 young people. Immigrants from non-English speaking backgrounds are particularly at risk, with around 28% experiencing social exclusion. To learn more about the issues, I met with two men at the coalface of the Diocese of Melbourne's response to the social exclusion of young people. Reverend Chaplain Jackson Soma works with the youth of Footscray out of St John's Anglican Church, while the Reverend C.S.C. Fatongia works with boys incarcerated at the Parkfall Youth Detention Centre. Their years of experience have taught them that without proper support, young people can easily find themselves trapped in a vicious cycle. While it's clear that any young people can have problems, Reverend Soma says that he's found the children from recently arrived Sudanese families often fare worst in Footscray. Uh, many settle quite well, many with the challenges can't because mm. of the fact that yes, could be the language, mm. could be some other issues that they couldn't and they continue to struggle. And in schools of course children would do, some of the children could find it very challenging, mm. some would find it uh, easier to settle in and some could find it challenging because of the language and because of the, of the age as well. Mm. And then, of course, um, some would then drop off from school. Mm -hmm. And once they drop off, they would think, well, maybe the next thing to do is to find a job for mm -hmm. those who are already uh, over 18 or 18. Mm -hmm. And uh, they could be looking for a job and they can't find one. Mm -hmm. And so if they can't find jobs, then in the end, they are in between no job and then no school. Yes. So and then they fall through the gap. Yet the issue is not a cultural one. These young people simply lack the support they need to be involved in society which they don't yet feel a strong part of or have the skills to adapt to. Some end up saying, well, they've, they, they didn't come to the right place. Mm. But it's not the place. It's, you know, the children. It's what they couldn't do and what really couldn't work for them. Without support, he says, many find themselves leaving school and turning to drugs and alcohol. This sets them on a road which can often lead to trouble with the law. Reverend C.S. Efer explains that for many of the young people he deals with at the Parkville Detention Centre, prison is all that they know. Some of them is, uh, is coming up from the violent family. I ask. The father is still in there in the prison, the mother in and out from the prison, uncle in the other unit, and him is in there. So this means there's no place mm. for them to go in and say something. They go back to the same situation again. Mm. One 15 years boy I met in prison, he said, I asked, is this your first time? And he said, it's my seventh time, 15 years old, mm. seven times. So this is the same story. Mm. This cycle of incarceration in turn leads them to believe Criminality is all that they can aspire to. Yet like all people, they have the potential to become happy, upstanding members of our society. They just need a little help. 
Even in a prosperous country like ours, there are many reasons a person might find themselves disadvantaged. Helping people participate in society through work or volunteering is a great outcome for them in so many areas of life, and the sooner that can happen for any of us, the better. We can do what we can to help people when they're in need, but we can't settle for being an ambulance at the bottom of the cliff. This is where the long-term and structural response of government is important. We need to consider programs and policies that not only pick people up, but ensure they don't fall in the first place. Reverend Soma and Sia Sifa say that for young people in particular, it's a matter of engagement. Whether that be through work, study, sports or other things that set them on a positive path through greater participation. The Anglican Church works with people in all sorts of situations. And we want to be there in the times and situations of life that people find difficult. Our faith in the transforming power of Jesus Christ leads us to strive for a future where all can flourish.